The Bahamas has more coral reefs than any other country in the region. The Andrus Barrier Reef is one of the largest continuous reefs in the world. Whether we realize it or not, we are all connected to coral reefs in some way, especially living on a small island nation such as the Bahamas. Before we can begin to protect them, we have to first understand them. A coral reef is an ecosystem made up of different animals. So corals, many people don't know, but corals are actually animals. And they are a colony of animals. So just like how you have an ant colony or a bee colony, a coral itself and a specific species of a coral, so if we said brain coral, it's a colony of tiny little polyps that creates this coral head that we're familiar with known as brain coral. So the Bahamas is wholly dependent on the marine environment. It is what sustains us, whether for fishing, transportation, for recreation. Coral reefs are very important to the Bahamian economy. It supports uh, many of our fisheries. Coral reef species that we care about, especially for our fisheries, are species um, in the grouper family, species in the snapper family, also our crawfish or spiny lobsters, and conch are often found associated with coral reefs. So without those habitats, our populations will decline and again will have a tremendous impact on our fisheries industry. For example, lobsters generate through the export market a total of $75 million annually, and that is just for export of the lobster tails. Coral reefs are basically everything a fisherman needs because when you go to them, you can get anything. And I feel like if we don't stop what's going on, you know, in our waters, and we lose the coral reefs, basically the fishermen won't be able to make their money. That's our bread and butter gone. No money for us. For me, as a fisherman who actually needs fish, like besides lobster, without them, I don't think I'd be able to make any money. We can never overstate how important coral reefs are to the Bahamas. If one looks at it just from an economic standpoint, it is critically important for the survival and the sustainability of our sector. It's the dollar value of the dive industry, and we know that coral reefs, that's so critical to a successful dive industry. Um, annually, it's about $340 million. More importantly, it has grown approximately 10% over the past 20 years. That means it employs hundreds of Bahamians, potentially thousands, not just in Nassau and Paradise Island, but also in all of our family islands. And therefore, that we keep it in the pristine condition that people expect that we all do. Coral reefs are also important when it comes to protecting our islands from storm surge. So often when you're driving along the shoreline, you look out and you see the waves breaking on a coral reef. And if those waves weren't breaking on the coral reef, they would be breaking on land and impacting infrastructure, impacting houses and uh, hotels, and possibly impacting human lives when it comes to big storm events like hurricanes. Reefs in the Bahamas and throughout the Caribbean have been in decline for the past several decades. I can remember when I first started exploring coral reefs and when I fell in love with coral reefs as a child, I go back to those reefs today and they are not the same and they are covered in algae and the coral is gone and the large fish and the colorful fish that were always there aren't there anymore. Since 2011 we've had a major effort to assess coral reefs throughout the Bahamas. Over 200 reefs have been surveyed during that time, and we're continuing to build on that now. We prepare these technical reports that are sent to the government, and then we use other documents like a coral reef report card booklet that basically brings it to a format that is understandable to the general community. Where we used to have maybe 30% of our reefs being live coral, now it's only 10 to 12% of the reef is actually live coral. We have overfishing happening on a global scale, as well as pollution in the waters on a global scale, which is all feeding algae on the reef that's outcompeting the reef itself. And then you have regionally 
What also happened was the die-off of the long-spined sea urchins, which were eating that algae, essentially. And then locally, we are now also turning to very important algae feeding fish for the first time in, in our history in the Bahamas, and this is only gonna have even worse impacts. Parrotfish is a fish, for example, that for a very long time, we never considered eating, but now we are actually starting to fish that uh, fish for the first time, and now we're in real danger because Parrotfish are major eaters of algae on the reef and, and help keep reefs healthy. Building close to the shoreline, applying fertilizers and pesticides, inappropriate runoff of, of sewage waste and all sorts of other waste is negatively impacting coral reefs in the Bahamas. As climate starts to change, the sea levels are actually going to start uh, increasing and corals are so sensitive to any change. So even the slightest change in sea temperature is going to cause some dying. To reverse the decline of reefs in the Bahamas, we need to adopt several strategies to address different problems affecting reefs. Um, there's not a one-size-fits-all approach, so we need to address issues related to fishing unsustainably. We need to address issues of coastal development that's affecting the reefs. We need to maintain entire ecosystem health to support the reefs. And then we can also actively restore reefs in some areas to help jumpstart the recovery process. Bahamians, first of all, can be more conscious of their actions. For example, we can ensure that we have proper waste disposal for all waste products. Boaters also can be mindful of where they deploy their anchors so that they don't destroy our coral reefs. Be aware of the fish that you're eating and when you're eating it. So for example, species like the grouper and the lobster, um, they have closed seasons. And it's extremely important that we respect those close seasons because if you don't, what you're essentially doing is you're eating this animal while it's trying to reproduce. And if you don't give it a chance to reproduce, there won't be the next generation of that, those animals on the reef. So the Bahamas has an enviable record of creating national parks and protected areas. We need to create more protected areas. We need to make sure that they're well managed, which means that we need to continue to get the support of government for funding. Uh, for helping us to enforce the regulations, etc., to ensure that these protected areas are well managed. Marine protected areas will indeed be able to reduce the level of fishing pressure and other human-induced factors that affects the integrity of those systems. So it's a lot that we have to do, but we have to do it in a way that each of us makes a minimal sacrifice for the greater good of the environment. So if I was to describe coral reef in one word, it would have to be services. It serves the, the biodiversity in terms of habitat and food, etc. but it also serves people in terms of recreational, in terms of feeding people, and it's just the well-being of uh, the planet. If I had to describe coral reefs in one word, I would use the word bounty, uh, because they benefit us in so many ways and are really worthy of our protection. If I was going to describe Bahamian coral reefs in one word, it would be amazing. Um, every time I dive, I'm just constantly in awe of the amount of life on the reef uh, that's created by these tiny things to build these huge structures that so much life uh, depends on. By implementing several key strategies, we can put Bahamian reefs back on the path to being vibrant ecosystems, teeming with marine life and supporting the lives of every Bahamian. However, this will require action on all our parts. We can be more conscious of our actions by properly disposing of our waste, particularly on the beach and near the coastline. Policymakers, scientists, and NGOs can ensure the adoption of sustainable fishing regulations, the creation and implementation of sustainable development plans for our islands, the implementation of a network of effectively managed protected areas, and the rehabilitation and restoration of impaired coral reefs. Together, we can reverse the decline of Bahamian coral reefs.